Okay, so I injured myself while squatting in the gym and now I have to get surgery on my hips. You can come up here, honey. Hi. I'm making this video because I wanna share my story. Um, I wish I would have known what could happen if you weren't careful in the gym and I would have taken a lot more care of my body. My injury is actually fairly common. Uh, my doctor explained that it wasn't anything I was doing wrong in the gym. It was actually an abnormality I had in my bone structure called a hip impingement. And I'll explain later exactly what that means. But my doctor also said this is very common in women who were athletic during middle school or high school. I wasn't an athlete per se, um, but I did start to work out and, and be active in high school, so I probably developed it then. I started lifting heavy weights about four to five years ago and squatting heavy weights. I wanted to build the booty and working out just made me feel good and strong and powerful and it was fun and I enjoyed it. And I still enjoy working out, that's why I wanna get surgery to fix the problem. I never squatted crazy weight, but I was repping about 150 to 160 pounds consistently. And the only reason I say that is so that you don't think I was just some noob in the gym that was clumsy and making mistakes because I didn't know how to do the workout properly. I knew what I was doing, but the damage was occurring slowly over time. So my symptoms came on pretty suddenly. And again, this was after four to five years of lifting weights in the gym. I started noticing a pinching sensation in my left hip flexor whenever I would squat and I ignored it at first, I know, but within a few weeks it got to the point where I couldn't even squat the bar without it hurting so bad that I had to stop. So I rested for a few weeks, but then even after squatting body weight, my hips were still really sore the day after. So after two months, I decided to go to physical therapy and that's where they really focused on um, teaching me to squat without putting weight on my hip flexors, which is very important, but that wasn't the problem at the time. But after about five months on and off with physical therapy, it was still hurting. Um, I wasn't getting any better. So I went to get some imaging. I got an MRI from my doctor and he found that I had labral tears in both hips. So the labrum is a piece of cartilage tissue in your hip socket like that. Uh, but more importantly, my doctor found that the cause of these labral tears was a hip impingement, which is extra bone growth around the hip socket or the femur that makes your bones grind together every time you squat. Um, I also had an anterior pelvic tilt, and most women do. It's not just sticking your butt out on purpose. It's a muscle imbalance when your quads are stronger than your glutes and hamstrings, and it tilts your pelvis out like that. Um, it can also just develop naturally in women during puberty. And you can tell if you have an anterior pelvic tilt when you lie on your back and there's lots of space between your back and the floor, like in the top picture. I had a combination of both. I've always had an anterior pelvic tilt um, ever since I was a teenager, but I was also very quad dominant and relying on my quads and hip flexors when squatting a lot. So all this extra friction in my bones eventually wore down my labral tissue over time. And the scariest part is, is that it was happening over years. I didn't know it was happening. I had no signs until the very end. And like I said earlier, hip impingement is actually fairly common. I didn't have any signs of hip impingement. I'm very flexible. I can squat ass to grass if I want to. Sometimes when I would squat, I would feel a lightning bolt go down my leg. <laughs> um, it sounds bad, but it didn't feel that bad, so I didn't think much of it. Um, but that's actually a sign that something's pinching when you're squatting. So if you think you have a hip impingement, go see your doctor. Obviously, I'm not a doctor. I'm just speaking from my experience in my situation. So go see your doctor, especially one that specializes in female anatomy. This is very important because something that would not be considered a hip impingement in a man is a substantial hip impingement in a female. Um, and that's just because we're a lot more flexible and we have an anterior pelvic tilt naturally. Um, so it just causes more friction with that small hip impingement. So this is what my anterior pelvic tilt looks like. I've been working on it a lot in physical therapy, so it's not as bad as it was. But as you can see, my spine curves inwards a little bit and my butt sticks out. 
This also makes my stomach curve out and I'm pretty tiny so it doesn't look that bad now but it's going to look really bad when I'm old and chunkier. Um, so if you don't fix an anterior pelvic tilt it'll get worse and worse with age until you look like this. So if you do have an anterior pelvic tilt and you want to fix this posture, focus on pulling your lower abs in towards your spine and tilt your butt under you. It feels and looks really awkward at first, but you should feel your butt muscles more engaged when you stand like this. So if you practice this posture, it'll make your butt perkier in the long run. A lot of times you don't need surgery for a hip impingement or a labral tear, so don't freak out if you're having symptoms. Sometimes it's just a muscle imbalance that's tilting your hips more severely and causing that greater friction, um, or you're just doing deep squats way too much. Um, those are things that you can easily fix. For me, my hips are already hurting on a regular basis, and even after eight months of being out of the gym and doing physical therapy, um, it's still not better, and I still can't even squat body weight without it hurting my hips the next day. So I tried a lot before resorting to surgery, um, but I like being active. I want to get back in the gym, so this is just important for me to at least try to do surgery. So I want to document my experience doing surgery because it is a very intense healing process, and I want people to know what can happen if they're not being careful in the gym. Um, I see so many YouTube videos and Instagram videos of girls with very severe pelvic tilts doing very deep squats, and it just makes me cringe now. Um, so I, I feel a responsibility to educate people on the dangers of um, doing certain types of body movements and how to identify when you do have a, a hip impingement or a pelvic tilt that you can work on fixing those things. I'll also make another video on how you can prevent damage to your labrum if you do have a hip impingement and also how you can straighten your hips out if you are quad dominant, which tilts your hips forward, so you're putting even more pressure on your hips. And I also just want to learn about other common injuries that can happen in the gym, um, so I can prevent things like this from happening to me in the future. Please like this video and share it if you find this kind of information to be helpful. I don't see a lot of this kind of stuff in YouTube. Um, I see a lot of the wrong stuff, so I just want to hopefully bring this to light and, and share with people how things can go wrong. Okay, bye.